Hey guys, after over two months without a custom ROM review, I thought it would be the right time to make a last one before the next version of Android arrives. And I also wanted to make a few changes, because when I'm doing a custom ROM review now, I want to answer the stuff I'm actually personally interested in myself, and that would be three main things. First of all, the features, because otherwise the ROM is useless to me if I don't have the features I want. The second thing is performance and battery life. Of course, that's important and the third and really important thing also is the stability and the rom support so i want to do this now and the rom i'm reviewing today is serum so let's get started Okay, so let's start with the features and I want to start with the basic ones first. If we go into sound, we have the quiet hours here. We have all the usual stuff you might know, like as you can already see, just check them for yourself. In the display part also you will find CRT animations, the list view animations, the interpolator, also the toast animations, also the notification light where you can change the light of the notifications. That is pretty important for me because this inter inbuilt one just works the best for me and pretty much the rest is standard but now i want to take more time what is also there we have the cm theme engine this is awesome because now we have the great amount of really great themes of course we also have the dark serum tool so you can switch everything to inverted black but here's where the big thing starts it's in the c tool don't worry about this is just my theme i'm using otherwise it would look better but i just thought i'm going along with this so if you check interface here we have of course the power menu and the animation stuff and also we have recent panel with slim reasons all that is there no problem the cool thing here is shake events and if you what is what it does if you shake your device it will launch different activities like you can see here when i shake it horizontally it opens my quick settings panel notifications when i shake it vertically and back and forth to the torch i tried this and it works pretty nice and it's actually not even a bad feature in status bar we have the standard thing like battery icons status bar traffic monitor we also have the notification drawer when you can change your quick settings styles as you want they are fully customizable that is great and there's a lot more also there if you check the lock screen, we have the A target lock screen. We also have Paranoid Android's peak feature. I'm not really a big fan of it, but if you like it, okay. Otherwise, there are a tons of different features, as you can already see here. There is a button, but since we have a Nexus, we don't have any. We also have lock screen notifications, also pretty awesome. Active displays there and some other widget options. That's it for this. If you check the navigation, we have the navigation bar with the five buttons, the nav ring, and all that with comes also. We have Pi, of course. Every part, every ROM should have it if you need it. Sidebar tab is also pretty nice to have. You have an app circle bar, and I can show this real quick. Here is the app circle, and you can select a different amount of apps and launch them just like that. That's the app bar. You also get no, that's the app circle. The app bar is this. If you swipe, you have this. But I'm personally not a big fan of it because there are better side launchers out there. In the mix tabs, you find different stuff like battery saver mode. There are tons of battery saving options. They work pretty nice. What is also pretty cool, you have an inbuilt ad blocker. So you don't need any other apps for that. You have on the go mode, I think you know what it is. So you have a see-through screen through the camera and such stuff. You also have in D options, a wake lock blocker. And that's mostly the big stuff. You also have a system remover and Omni switch. So as you can already see, there are tons of available features here. And there is all I ever wanted to do. Let's head over and talk about the performance. And here I have to say right now I'm using Franco kernel. But with the inbuilt one, the performance was super smooth. As you can maybe see here, Franco kernel isn't as smooth, but also pretty nice. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the performance if we check some sites. The loading times are fine. The sc scrolling is also very fine. Of course, you have to remember always this is Franco kernel, so there is a difference here. But otherwise, it is fine. But I want to talk about the battery life because performance undoubtedly very good, but the battery life wasn't as good because with the inbuilt kernel, I had very poor life. I got maybe 10 hours of average time with maybe two hours of screen time at best but i don't blame the rom for this i blame 4.4.3 and 4.4.4 i don't think will do any big changes here but 
using FrangoCon, things got better, but still not on 4.42 level. So things have, I got now three hours of screen on time, but before I got four or five on Wi-Fi. So there is definitely a thing, but like I said, I don't blame the ROM. If you use Franco kernel or any other kernel, things should get better again. But just so you know, out of the box, the battery life was pretty poor, not blaming the custom ROM for that. The last thing I want to quickly talk about now is the stability and the ROM support. And in terms of stability, everything was fine. With Franco kernel, I had some freezes, some lockups and everything. But with the stock kernel, I had nothing. Everything was smooth. When I switched kernels, I had some false closes on practically every app. But I think that's because of switching the kernel and I didn't wipe the Delvic or cache or anything. But otherwise, the system was stable. The other good thing is the ROM support. I checked XDA and I think I saw the developer answering and replying a lot but there is one different thing here compared to maybe roms like Mari. you don't get that often frequent updates but this doesn't mean you don't get any updates if something big comes up and a huge update will come and it is necessary then an update will come but i think that's the smart way because why do an update every time if you don't any have any actual changes so it's with worth flashing so whenever there's a need for a rom there will be an update. So can I recommend this ROM? And I have to say I can because one thing I really like is the layout of this. You have everything in the personalization, of course, a bit in the sound and in the display section. But in overall, I really like the quick access to all my stuff. I have all the features with this and the A-target lock screen and everything I wish for. So all the features I want are there. Performance was there. Battery life after changing the kernel was also there. And I really I, I like a clean look and everything here is makes perfectly sense. You see what you get, you see the interface, there is the interface stuff, status bar same, and it is not cluttered at all like on some other ROMs. Of course, I have to mention Madi ROM because Madi ROM is still one of my most favorite because it has a very clean layout as well. It's always practically always on the newest updates. So in terms right now. This ROM can easily compete with Mardi, but Mardi maybe has an upper hand when it comes to updates. But if you like this, definitely give it a try because everything you might possibly want on a ROM is there, no doubt about that. So that's it for my custom ROM review of the C ROM or Chrome, call it like ever you want it. I hope you liked it, I hope it was of any help. And if you want more of them, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel and reshare this video. Okay, bye.